Welcome into the Sunday Funday edition of NACL 2022, stage number two, that is. We're in play day number four. Lots of numbers to remember here, but I did get it right. I'm your host, Brimstone, and I'm with Cookies. I'm with CDAPs. We're getting ready for another super exciting day here. I feel like every day, I know it sounds like I'm exaggerating, but I feel like every day just keeps getting better than the last. Cookies, yesterday, especially the final match of the day, we just had, it was wild from top to bottom. And I feel like a lot of teams took some nice steps forward that they wanted to. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how we could possibly top that last game <laughs> of the day. I don't, I don't know. It doesn't get any better than that. But as we uh, move into the standings, and you know, we could talk about the, the impact mm -hmm. of that match and the impact of what that means. A couple of tactical... teams here, Cookies, getting that needed first win. Yeah, I mean, uh, the game and being the big one. I mean, they're all, they're still in tenth right now of course they're the first game of the day as well but they are in 10th um after a, a not celebratory couple of off-stream games you know they had to start the season mm -hmm. lsr got their first win wimp the wimpler actually those two are playing actually yeah it's those two the two teams that are the biggest surprises to me honestly. welcome to the show today cj <laughs> the, the two of the <laughs> two of the biggest surprises here you know nine and ten are playing today and it's like those are two teams we both considered contenders but they're obviously not in the best position right now. Luminosity, fresh, you know, fancy new org with the shiny Gucci all the way in seventh. They're looking to have a, a bit of a bounce back. Um, Aqualix, I, can't, I just can't believe Aqualix is an eighth. I, I I feel like they're like the best team ever, but they're an eighth. It's very strange. I mean, Connor took the kids. Yeah. Aren't they, aren't they mind blowing? Isn't that a mind blowing roster? It's mind blowing. And look at that top three for Nocturnes, even after they lost yesterday because Unemployment, who are right below them, decided to have CZ not play Rainbow Six Siege. He loaded up Modern Warfare 2 from forever ago, got a 25 kill streak, and dropped an absolute tactical nuke on them. 18 kills in 11 rounds. Absolutely massive in the off stream game, which, you know, I really <laughs> wish I could just see the absolute biblical bragging capability that CZ brought. Well, let's take a look at all of the stats for these players because we've seen some crazy numbers, especially on the side of rent free. That number is just popping out of the page, Connor. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> a whole lot of kilo, a lot of one shot in general, you know, even prod, you know, leading up on the survivability, he's getting the biggest beta award of the year on Flank Watch because, you know, as Flank Watch, you're obviously supposed to die first. That's what your role means. Not, not the entries. It's the Flank Watch that's supposed to. But one of the biggest thing is right in the middle of your screen, a little bit to the left, you see Dexter at plus 12 entry after this is the second week of play days. And that's absolutely huge. He already has numbers for an entire season worth of play. And he's going to be playing in just a little bit. And hopefully he can bring that same energy once again. Mm -hmm. There's a big focus right now on gaming gladiators. Keep in mind right now, they are going to be starting off of our day in the first two matchups. The second of which will feature Rent Free and Dexter in the game. But right now, LSR gaming gladiators. LSR as well, picking up their first win. Now, it was in regulation. And that does make a big difference, Cookies. It really felt like this roster was getting getting their game together uh, to the level that we expected. Was that supposed to be a pun? Or no? Nope, what did I do? I, I thought, I thought you were talking about gaming and other gaming or something. Oh anyway. no 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 no! <laughs> anyway, let's talk LSR. Let's talk the highlight player Wimpy. He only has a point nine seven, and that's because the first two games he kind of sucked. But you know what? In the third game, he changed his roles around a little bit. Swapped with Enrio. Got the Finca, and you know what happens when you get to pick Finca? You you get a lot of kills because Finca has a light machine gun and grenades, and Fink and a uh, Wimpy made good use of both of those items. Vivid had a biblical clutch yesterday. Giddy is just unbelievably consistent, and of course, Young Alec. We hyped him up yesterday. Forceful, I think, said he was considering Young Alec to stand out, but now with Wimpy and Young Alec playing together, well, well together, is that how that works? This team is looking primed to have a resurgence here at this, uh, hopefully in the latter half of this stage, from what the standards they have set at least. I mean, this is a team that we thought was just going to cakewalk things. Maybe we're going to see that now with the role changes, or maybe not. Maybe they just get slammed by game in today. We'll see. Well, it's unfortunate that this team now is to face off against Gaming Gladiators right away because 
for both of these teams right as they get that right step in the right direction <laughs> one of them connor and it, maybe it's gaming gladiators here we'll have to take a step back yeah, right now both these teams, you know, they're at the bottom of the ladder trying to climb up and thankfully and kind of when they fight, they're going to knock another one off the bottom of the ladder and they don't fall that far. So it's not like absolutely massive in the way that they fall. But with Gaming Gladiator, their trajectory has looked a lot better after that win against Luminosity yesterday. It was a victory that nobody predicted at all, at least for LSR's victory. You know, a couple of us voted that, hey, LSR could win. Nobody on the talent team predicted gaming gladiators to quote unquote upset luminosity gaming and they looked pretty dang good while doing it and the best thing about that game was that everybody was getting involved especially in the adaptation game you would see rudy kind of just sitting very passive early on in the defensive half and then when we got to ot he was on the alibis running out of every single soft destruction wall that the attackers opened up running all around just challenging every gunfight and that was kind of an ideology that went through the entire team sure jolton he didn't have the best stats but every single kill he got of his six were incredibly impactful round winning even and now it's up to we were saying it was all up to courts courts has to do everything he's hard carrying this team but now yeah so a lot of the pressure has fallen off of his shoulders and if that is to be the case, and that is the trend that continues, this team can just keep on going upwards. Mm -hmm. and, and the storylines are so similar. It's both of these coming together as teams. LSR, speaking of teams, though, they were the ones that took down uh, Ariel Arise, 7-5 to five victory on Clubhouse. So a bit better of a team, at least so far through the stage. We know Luminosity was the reigning victors through stage one. Uh, you know, I like their victory a bit more, if I'm being honest, Cookies. Right, um... As I said earlier, Wimpy. Wimpy has shown that he can be the franchise player. He has mm -hmm. re-shown us because he had been showing us for like two years straight. And then PB just kind of got unlucky off that roster. But I think this guy is a franchise player. I think you can build a team around him. And you know, he showed it. Yes, he was playing Finca. I get it. You know, it's it's a noob operator. Anyone can do it. But no, Wimpy is actually elite like that. He's actually like that. I'm telling you. And yes, that quote in the second critical point, that is from an unknown source of the uh, LSR roster that said, <laughs> not going to lie, you can fill in the blanks. But they're dialed in now. They were maybe trolling a little bit. Like I said, Vivid was trying to do a bunch of different roles with like a bunch, like he had Squidward arms going, trying to do a thousand different things like an octopus. But now this team's dialed in. They're ready to win. And uh, if they lose, like I said, a game, this is this is the type of game they're built to win. This is why they built this roster to take down teams like Gaiman. Can they do it? Can they? Well, will they? Is your is your mic okay, Connor? I know you. you I, I think it up. I think it okay, is perfect. I think yeah. it is. So you're able to talk about Gaiman Gladiators then? Yes, I can. Okay, because for them, it's it's a it's a little bit easier to talk about what they need to do because mm -hmm. they did a lot of things and checked a lot of boxes on their improvement arc. You know, they, they went in the hyperbolic time chamber and trained for 50 million years. Now they're back and looking a lot better. And the main thing is just, can they hold control and hit C and then hit control and V, copy and paste and get a repeat performance of what we saw yesterday with those great adaptations. The early round was actually tolerable and was netting main advantages early on as opposed to them just kind of sitting back and taking it on the pressure from the attack or the defense, depending on whatever side that they were on. And now kind of the only difference is when you're going to be going up against a team like LSR, you just have to expect that, yes, there's mm -hmm. going to be a little bit more utility than when you're playing against Luminosity. You like to let their guns do the talking. We even saw a castle ban. So how can you possibly play utility setups on border without castle? It was a very wild west kind of showcase. Mm -hmm. And that's really not going to be the take, really not going to be the case at all when you play against LSR. I think you can agree with that, CJ. I can. I totally quintessentially agree. Okay. Now, we were lucky enough to see five different maps yesterday. Obviously, we're going to get a new one for the day today since it is the first map. CJ, what can we expect? Can we expect another basic clubhouse for LSR? Or can we expect something maybe a little more interesting? Man, I don't know what we can expect. I think we can expect the theme park bands. From game and i think we can expect the skyscraper ban from lsr it's, it's been the case since the map existed we're not going to see that border again we're not going to see the crazy gaming border again lsr banning that out as well something that's also not too terribly surprising they don't really like the new maps all that much it's kind of banned quite a bit which means yes brim to answer your question 
we're gonna play a basic map that we all know and love oregon a map lsr historically you know they can feel comfortable on we talk a whole lot we talk it to death they love utility they love playing behind shields doing this and that and i think they've improved their attack mm -hmm. and execute side of things mm -hmm. over over time and i think that's gonna do well for them today of course gaming is more than comfortable playing mm -hmm. or i think everyone in this league <laughs> is more than comfortable playing oregon i think everybody that has to, uh, has the game installed is comfortable on oregon Thank well you. it would just Let's wouldn't go, it just it. make sense connor we'll throw up the predictions here it would make sense that this is almost just a smart pick for both teams you know you've come off that first win yesterday for both teams mm -hmm. Let's just try to keep the ball rolling. Yes, and so even though I'm switching my vote to LSR because the map Ooh. going to Oregon, I like them Ooh. a little bit more. Ouch. This is not me taking a slight on Foxy's honor like apparently I did yesterday. I think that LSR as well as Game of Gladiators probably knew that they were going to this map. However, there's one factor that they didn't take into account and the fact that Vivid on tarps is one of the most biblical players you can ever see. I've never seen a player in a power position lock it down quite that much. And just kind of the more fabled history on the side of LSR with Oregon and how default it is. I mean, you can play the same Oregon that you did two years ago, and it's about the same. Slight tweaks, but they've just been better. They have a better history. Mm -hmm. These players know the map just that little bit more, I think. And it's going to be a close game regardless. I think, honestly, this one goes to OT. Well, you know what? I'm torn now because Connor was the person that I chose to control, <laughs> copy, control, paste uh, on this one. But you know what? I'm going to do some thinking for my own this time. And I still still like Game and Gladiator's chances. It looks like these players are getting ready to go. We have to have a player or a team, sorry, move up. And another team, uh, maybe not move down, but maybe stay where they are. Either wait way, a second, we're wait getting a second. To... Oh, I have one thing. Yeah. Harrison, Harrison Crow Broder. Sure, it's his birthday today. But he's about the same level. You know, he turned 22 today, and his prediction percentage is just barely higher at 28. <laughs> so, also did want to wish a very happy birthday to him. He can't be with us because he doesn't have internet in his mm -hmm. new apartment. That's why he hasn't been on broadcast. But he will be back as soon as AT and T fixes their stuff, and hopefully, he can maybe raise that horrible, awful. I was going to say, <laughs> nice prediction birthday percentage. present, uh, LSR. Let's take this down to 20 22 for 22. Let's uh. Bring it all the way down, gaming gladiators with a, a nice little victory here on Oregon. You know, honestly, I think this might be the one unifying factor that we could have in Challenger League. I also am now rooting for LSR to lose, just so we can see how no low Harrison's prediction percentage could possibly be. But hello, everyone. It is Lynx, joined with Fellow as well for, as Connor said, I at least will be here for all the games today because Harrison does not have internet. And what a better present to start out the day, John. Then LSR going to Oregon, something that seems like those two things have been paired and joined at the hip for as long as there has been Challenger League. Yeah, it is just a, it's a biblical map, honestly, for LSR, especially now that Wimpy has finally gotten in the groove of things, finally putting himself in that position that Kento was pretty dominant on last stage. And because of the fact that Wimpy has been doing incredible on that entry job, it's been allowing the rest of his team to just overall do a better job in their roles as well. So there's a really good argument for LSR taking this victory, hence why I predicted them. But also Gaming Gladiators, they're kind of on their redemption arc as well. They remained very consistent and willing to adapt against Luminosity. So especially again on a cutthroat map like Oregon, I can imagine gaming gliders will keep this one close, and over time, it's definitely a huge chance going in this best of one. But maybe two teams who tend to thrive on consistency and maybe more static play when they go up against each other, maybe it will come down to Wimpy's a little bit higher performance over the past day or so up against gaming gladiators. Though at the same time, Quartz did also have a show-stopping game yesterday. In their game against LG. So both of these teams have some pretty uh, pretty good performers, at least in the past 24 hours of Challenger League. Of course, starting out for the attacking bands, though, I don't think anything will be particularly show-stopping here, John. Now we have the Ying ban out by Gaming Gladiators. Makes a little bit of sense. You don't have to worry about bringing out that Warden here and there. It also can potentially slow down the ability to properly execute if LSR does end up taking too much of their own time. And an interesting ban... Onto the Finca, I guess LSR seemed really confident in Wimpy still being able to do his job properly without that LMG, which I don't blame him. Wimpy is a fantastic player outright, so as long as they can get rid of that LMG crutch, I think things will be uh, pretty fine for them. Same thing goes for the Valkyrie ban, less information altogether, and sometimes crutching that info could be a really big make or break for that defensive side. 
It's a bold move for LSR to ban out the very operator that Wimpy had his comeback story on yesterday. So I like that level of confidence coming up from LSR saying, not only do we not need the Finca, which not saying that, you know, Wimpy can only play Finca. I just thought it was no. funny just because that was the operator he was mainly playing yesterday. It's also the operator that Kento had so many clips on, on Oregon specifically. So for LSR, that is an operator that on this map specifically, and with some of these players as well, they have achieved... Uh, Quite a lot of success, at least individually, with whoever picks that operator on Oregon specifically. So, no longer in the toolkit here for LSR. And going down to basement to start out, you know who's not banned, John? That operator that we always mention, if they are banned or not. We have Azami on the board. So, what could Jolton potentially add to the team's lineup? Because, to be fair, when you think of Azami maps, Oregon isn't exactly the first one to come to mind. Especially since you normally only need a handful of shields here and there, especially for that basement site, and normally the smoke and echo shield should be enough. Maybe we'll see Jolton potentially want to go for more of a light lurk, perhaps, or allow for more one ways to be found. Sometimes adding more pressure over towards someone working their way down and through Freezer is definitely a good option, especially if LSR have enough utility to just break through those ADSs and eventually deal with that regular default shield over near Highway. You then have to worry about those Azami Kiba Barriers, and again, the time management, it has been a pretty big issue for LSR besides really on their matchup against Air of the Rise. So if we begin to see those quirks fall in once again for LSR, also having to deal with the regular shields and those key bears could be a huge issue for them. I need to make sure they don't lose any nade operators early on, especially with Finca being banned, who typically is one of the main operators that you can rely on in an attacking lineup to be one with nades. Of course, same thing we said for Yana and Sledge, but still losing out a set that you can pretty much guarantee your attacking lineup would otherwise have in a normal game every single round. They do need to be careful. Two Kiba barriers already placed over in Small Tower, and this is where we tend to be if a zombie is on Oregon. That utility get placed off the site, maybe even inside a Small Tower early on, just to try to waste time or even aid a defender for trying to play their life. They are four defenders currently off-site at the moment. One has a pretty close retreat. Same with Quartz as well. So two defenders could move back down those staircases, but the site is fairly empty right now and a lot is being placed upstairs. Seems like LSR still going in, just working their way in through Small Tower. They'll have to face their fears directly in terms of this extension, but they've got multiple angles to do just that. Finally entering in through Dining, and Alec will begin to try to go for a grenade toss, but he'll just bait it instead, maybe expecting someone a wide swing, and he perfectly reads into that arrow, the first one to fall, as that roam extension over near Dining begins to get a little bit weaker. But maybe Barring has something to say about this. He might try to get a little aggressive to work some sort of trade, and he might have been heard with the audio call, but not directly spotted. Still, though, a Great start for LSR in that roam clear. Now, thankfully for Game and Gladiators, obviously in an ideal world, both Arrow and Jolton are able to make it back down that freezer hatch, but they lose the player in Kitchen. That does mean that Jolton can retreat down the hatch fairly safely. But if you lose Jolton and say Arrow was the one who remained alive, odds are he's going to get pinched by that attack. So out of both of those people who could potentially have fallen, Game and Gladiators, it's not great, it's not ideal, but it is the better situation than what might have otherwise happened. And still only have a minute 20 seconds for LSR to start pushing on in. But Ayana Clone and Wimpy have both started to make inroads on Freezer. Still gathering tons of information as well. It does seem like we're bound to see more of that freezer and laundry kind of play. We did see at least one attacker being giddy, I believe, to actually begin to creep his way down through back stairs. And it seems like he's still holding that position, currently guarding in case a flank abrupts. And maybe he could end up rotating in through bunker doorway or just somewhere where he can help out the rest of his teammates in terms of burning those ADSs and removing some of those shields. But at least the one in highway has already been removed. And barring has been spotted once again on that proper info game done by LSR. Inrio weary of any presence on the laundry machines. He sees the Kiva barrier right there and knows that, in general, even without an Azami on the board, that is a position that not only his team loves to play on the defense, but any team on Oregon loves to play on the defense. But with the Kiva barrier there, even more likely that someone might try to rotate there later on. But with only 30 seconds left, this round, no round in general, can be won by holding these angles. Elastar have to start moving in, and move in they will. A couple dropping down that laundry hatch, and Inrio finally peeks and gets the second, third kill overall for Elastar. Four for, well, Elastar in general but three for young Alex specifically. Rudy, who was the only one on the site in the early round, is now the last one out the door as LSR stormed down to the basement. Take round one. And a fantastic start by LSR, immediately removing that thorn of that Rome game. And 
because the young Alec was able to get that first entry in a decent amount of time, it forced the rest of gaming gliders to tuck tail and run. It wasn't that big of an issue because they still had a ton of utility to play around and they didn't have to worry about all that much verticality. Of course, a lot of that flooring being soft, they could just hold those power positions and force the hand of LSR, but they were still taking their time, gathering that information, stacking up to burn through all those ADSs that were guarding the shields. And eventually, gaming gliders were forced so far back that LSR gained enough map control. They were able to still work a couple of ones in their favor and able to get the round win altogether. Seems like laundry and supply will be re-attempted now by gaming gladiators and maybe trying to not get as aggressive on that roam game to really try to force LSR to make that first move eventually. We dedicate some Kiva barriers to Arrow upstairs as well, as Jolton used both of them to block off that entrance from Small Tower into the Shower's hallway early on. Maybe instead of doing that, you use both of the ones you get in the prep phase to put one on Arrow's door, maybe put one on Jolton's door as well, put it a little bit outside to allow for some aggressive play if they want to, maybe a little bit more smarter of an allocation of Jolton's Azami barricades early on could make Arrow's life a little bit easier and allow him to rotate back, even if he's not trying to get aggressive, but to drop down that hatch after 15, 20 more seconds. It does appear that LSR are still going for some aggressive play offsite, indicated by Arrow's position and the reinforcements placed in meeting. So LSR are going for the same overall methodology Let's see what kind of minute changes they make. So far, nothing too jarring just yet. Jolton is still playing about near that dining and security area, so potentially some of those Kiba Bears could get deployed early on once they realize where exactly LSR is pushing from. And as of right now, it seems like they'll want to go for the same plan of attack, getting that small tower control and trying to just charge into the fray as quickly as possible. But I don't blame them if you're able to still work that first entry and force the roam game back. It does give you that sense of security. It allows you to get the hatches open at a much faster time and just be in a better position to set up and still go through that default util burn you always see happen on this basement site. Spotted out some of the cube barriers early on. Jolton going for a little bit more active allocation. Arrow already, believe, though, rotated out of dining at the moment, or outside of... Nope, still at the back. Just at the very back of kitchen. I thought maybe, maybe he's gone, but no. Still all the way back behind some boxes in the back of the room. Attacker's worried about that key barrier and the potential of Arrow getting aggressive, but Jolton and Quartz are still there to aid the Malusi and give each other a helping hand if the need requires. But as opposed to before, where Arrow was pretty much dead and gone at about this time, LSR not only have their full manpower, but are also still actively wasting even more time. Jolton spots young Alec through the wall into dining, gets that first pick, and immediately Game and Gladiators move back down towards the site. All that pressure now completely alleviated once you move down a floor lower and have to worry about one less set of grenades, which could potentially allow some of these shields to stay up for a little while longer. And the fact that Jolton is alive could potentially proc a couple of extra key barriers if he had not maybe used all of them on that top floor. He might still have one more in his back pocket, but still a low amount of key barriers altogether is still better than none at all, or just another gun up is going to go a long way for gaming, especially since last time they were already at that deficit and it did stress them a little bit in terms of trying to keep LSR outside of Freezer for a long period of time. So a little bit stressed for LSR as well. Young Alec really was the one on top of Inrio getting that pick and long who was able to open things up with that 3k he got in round one. So having that big performer no longer a factor might put a lot more pressure on Inrio's shoulders who might not have gotten as many kills as young Alec, but definitely got a very important one by taking down barring inside of long. Giddy's also now, instead of going down back tower stairs, rotated outside the bunker doorway to maybe push in from this position, both him and Vivid. The latter, of course, being the player that Connor hyped up to fill this very spot and to watch inside a pillar and anybody pushing up aggressively as well. Might just be what LSR need to bring things back into a 4v4 and maybe translate to a man advantage and an execute in the next few seconds. They know Arrow is likely in pillar. They'll turn their attention to Elbow as well, dumping in some flashbangs as Giddy watched to see if Arrow decides to get aggressive, but he starts moving on forward instead. Does spot Arrow, does get the kill anyway. Seems a little more accidental than everything, but he'll take one when he gets one. But Rudy's still inside of Elbow. He's not giving it up just yet. LSR running incredibly low on time, but still able to keep it even. A 3v3 right now, make that a 3v2, but Rudy gets the flank and almost gets the second. But even with the flank, Inrio is still able to shut it down. And a great adjustment by LSR as well. Seeing that that freezer clear was just ending out fruitless despite getting that back shield opened up. They completely change their attacking plan. They go in through the meeting hatch. They rotate in through blue bunker and are still able to isolate those one for ones to a degree where they reclaim the man advantage and can begin to pressure that diffuse play as well. When you want to go in for that freezer and laundry attack, unless you can properly keep out anyone that can push in through that closet rotator, anyone that can aggressively work past those cutoff angles, there really is no chance you can get that 
diffuser down with LSR realizing that they were able to completely readjust their style of play and it worked out with pretty much no strings attached besides that small flank we saw over in blue bunker but it was quickly shut down and because of that LSR was still able to take that round win against the basement defense so far the most favored site for the defense on Oregon has not been very successful for Gammon Gladiators. Not to say they haven't had success on it in individual moments. Rudy's flank, Jolton's opening pick, and even still able to hold on against LSR for as long as they did in round one and force them to take gunfights in order to clear out key positions instead of just, you know, getting naded, dying, and LSR taking it for minimal cost. And Gladiators were able to do some work, but overall it's been LSR that was more consistent on those efforts, rotating up to dorms. See, not a, again, not an off pick coming out from LSR, but similar to that Amaru in round one, we will see Wimpy flex on the Nook for the Dorms attack, where he decides to focus some of his energy, while with Nook and oh, as, on Oregon as well, sky's your limit for what you want to do. Could end up going in through that basement, perhaps fully clearing out any roam presence in that direction, having that mask of uh, anti-information, the hell scanner, and also going for nades as well. The vertical that you can establish here when attacking Kibs can be pretty darn strong, especially when you have someone like Giddy rocking the bucket, opens up those sight lines on top of having six grenades in total. It definitely does seem like a good option for LSR to want to go for that bottom to top clear and then focus on the sight presence later when they can have somebody rotate on big window maybe have somebody go addict as well and, and really force the hand of gaming gladiators early on once again like we have seen lsr doing round after round wimpy is certainly trying to force an advantage early on but barring might just be aware of it we even heard wimpy but he'll start sprinting off maybe more of a precautionary measure than an actual inclination as to what wimpy is doing or even the potential location of an lsr player down in back tower stairs. So when people hold there for the time being, as drones from Young Alec and Giddy and Inrio as well all start flying into kitchen dining. They've nailed down Barring's position and with Wimpy on big tower stairs, this could be a fairly effective pinch if anybody from LSR can get into position. But right now, it's just Wimpy and Barring in a potential 1v1. They have intel on his position, but Barring still is not looking. More focused on kitchen dining and where all the drones are coming from, he forgets the very player that he was weary of initially. And now gaming glitters also have to worry about that back push either leading in through meeting side or just having having the Nook walk in through Kitchen itself to begin throwing out those grenades. Also not having a rotate in through security kind of isolates Quartz. He does have that hatch to fall back from, but still giving up this map control is definitely huge, but Rudy working vertical of his own, I believe he's able to catch Giddy off guard. The buck is down, but at least the nades are still in play in the final minute. You still have those nades, and even though you won't be able to open up the floor, Buck is already an uncommon enough pick on dorms that LSR, they might have been focusing a bit of their attention on it to expedite any clear inside of dorms or try to get any more kills, but it's not something that they will be completely unadjusted to or not used to dealing with. And well, with that nade kill from Wimpy, able to make a good use of that hatch being opened up and Quartz waiting down inside of security, that deals with one of the main players you're concerned about if you're trying to hop in through Big Window or go up White Stairs. That player who can hold down below with a C4 and a shotgun, you no longer have to worry about. But LSR, similar to those previous basement defenses, are still starting to run a little bit low on time. 30 seconds left, and even with a 4v3, Game and Gladiators have time to consolidate in their positions and wait for the attack to start pushing on in and might be able to get one or two kills before LSR can begin trading them back. They have some secondary utilities, still one nade each for young Alec and Enrio, the former of which will throw one in inside that generator window. Or might have just cooked it for a little bit, not entirely sure, but still 10 seconds left now as one hops in the big window. Jolton should be able to spot this, but he lets him go by. A 4k for Wimpy so far, a shut down, but Vivid should be able to get this bomb down with little to no recourse from Jolton, who saw the very player hop in the big window. He might just redeem himself with this 1v3. He's taking down two so far. Vivid just waiting on the diffuser. Jolt knows his general position. He's got to take the fight. With Vivid on low HP, this is difficult, but not very hard if you're able to land the headshot. Jolton gives Gaiman their first round with the defuse. And thankfully, being able to isolate both of those kills, it was just enough to let Jolton get that defuse down and not have a 3-0 scoreline in this matchup. Still, though, a heroic play done by Wimpy, being able to slowly creep his way up across the map. I believe he walked in through Trophy, if not maybe the Addict window. And again, having that hell system activated, it just denies 
any sort of information that Gaming Glider's dead players can utilize. He was able just to walk right into sight, work countless picks, and force a two versus one during the post plant. That is a almost perfect position to be in. But again, because LSR just couldn't team up properly and hold in that post plant position properly, it did allow Gaming Gliders to bounce back and still get that round win despite a pretty rocky start towards those final 30 seconds. And even if it comes with a 1v3, Game and Gladiator still able to win one of those primary defensive sites on Oregon and not have to go into either a second dorms defense or even a tertiary site being down 3-0. They will go to that third bomb site option, though, instead of going to retry basement. They'll give meeting and kitchen a try. And definitely after both those basement losses might be the best chance for them, even if overall still a little bit worrying especially for game and gladiators right now three rounds in and john three-fifths of their team still on zero kills so far jolton and rudy the only ones able to mount any kind of effort or resistance to lsr so far on oregon at least at the moment maybe there's well there is plenty of time for barring arrow and even courts to get their performances up and courts even to reclaim some of that energy he had yesterday but going to that third site LSR might just be able to open up the attic wall, the meeting wall, and to get a kill inside of the site itself, move in for a plant, you're going to really have to start getting active if you want to have any chance of stopping LSR. LSR having countless amounts of flank watch, both the air jabs and also you have the gridlock track stingers if need be, so fully clearing out this top floor might be on the agenda for the offense in round number four. Seems like for Inrio, he wants to start out over in small tower, but a good chunk of the offense is still clearing their way presumably towards lobby and maybe also the top of master bedroom as well if they can establish that vertical presence that can weaken the you know presence overall over near the b bomb side of kitchen and also maybe force anybody away from attic side slash big tower that way they can just solely focus in on that middle floor and potentially have great coverage if they're able to get that diffuser down once again since lsr have been trying to go for those post plant positions countless times in this first round they will go for that vertical early on. Young Alec making his way up Armory Stairs in the first 45 seconds. There is a couple players on that top floor, including Jolton, playing behind a deployable shield, watching to see if anybody enters Master Bedroom or Trophy. Very interesting position. Not a, something I've actually seen before, at least I can remember casting. Jolton can obviously contest if anybody moves in through those doorways, even use some Shumika grenades to deny anybody from moving in, and will actively deny attic control that the attack can have. And out of everything on this top floor you could want for a meeting kitchen attack, control of attic is what the attack is seeking first and foremost. For Jolton, he's likely going to be playing his life there, might be able to even rotate back if LSR don't rotate anybody over to Big Tower. Arrow seeming to be aware that someone could potentially go up white stairs or at least hear the audio call near the closet while someone's opened it up and is beginning to move closer and closer towards their position. Seems like Jolton is still just holding far back. As long as Arrow can just only have to focus in on that kid's doorway, he should be fine. Even trying to utilize that nitro cell, but he gets caught in the roof, so he'll have to be a little more proactive in this position. Maybe even opting to fall back just to make sure he doesn't lose his life early on, but he wants to try to confirm a kill before eventually dropping down a floor. LSR so far have been stumped on this top floor hold. Young Alec will just resign himself to Arrow and Jolton still holding their position. Start getting vertical control in classroom, but Arrow's got to jump back very quickly. No, never mind. He holds his ground, but with two flashbangs in his way, he's got to hope Young Alec has an oversight, but he catches him completely off guard. Though Vivid almost falls. Maybe Arrow is robbed a little bit with that singular shotgun blast. Still giving the opening to LSR, but they on the roam have done their jobs, and yet still LSR mounted offense as we go into only 30 seconds remaining. Jolton's still on that top floor, but They've taken down both Rudy and Arrow with smoke canisters and a C4, respectively, for both of them. And those Shamika grenades and that attic pressure doesn't really matter all that much. Now that LSR can get a plant down inside a kitchen. Wimpy with his third kill. Giddy with a fourth. Barring 0-3 at the moment. Is staring down the barrel of some impactless frags. And that's even if he gets anything. A flawless round for LSR in round number four. And despite having Jolton do a great job of making sure Arrow only had to focus in on the kid's doorway, it still was not enough because how much utility LSR had on that top floor. Countless flashbangs were flung at the mute's eyes. They eventually had a couple grenades tossed his direction either because how important that vertical pressure is and also finding that entry kill when you are very limited on time. If we had Arrow potentially fall back and not try to utilize his Nitro Cell early on, that could have been a huge thing to stop the Sledge from providing that vertical coverage and also allowing that ease of access from the top floor immediately in through the middle floor to get that defuse down and end the round flawlessly as well for LSR because they were just, they were so, I guess, disciplined on needing to clear out that top floor and eventually try to work for that site presence as well. 
Demon Gladiators will take a tactical timeout. Definitely think uh, at this point is very good because they had that 1v3. Okay, maybe we're able to get it back on track. But so far in the rounds that they have lost, even when Game Gladiators have had moments where they have looked good, it has seemed like the round has been ripped from them and there hasn't been much of a collective response from them to get things back on track. After that round as well, since it was a flawless, nobody from LSR died. We're still at the same stats as well, with 60% of Game and Gladiators not having a single kill throughout four rounds of Oregon defense. Arrow came close, I will admit. To be perfectly honest, probably should have gotten that kill on Vivid, just because the shotgun can be a little bit particular sometimes. But it's still very worrying if on Oregon defense... Only two of you have been able to get kills, and a lot of the times, it's been in the late round where either LSR have made mistakes or oversights that allow you an opportunity to get some picks. Game and Gladiators will go back down to basement, the site in which, again, there were some good moments. Jolton getting the opening pick in round two, and Rudy flanking to kill the planter later on, and still able to hold off in the late round all the way back in round number one, but again from Game and Gladiators, it's been individual plays. We still need to see after this timeout, everyone show up at least in playing together, even if they don't get kills. Yeah, that consistency we saw Gaming Gladiators actually be able to perfect against Luminosity just hasn't been shown just yet in this best of one against LSR. And really, it seems like this basement floor has been kind of a, a black flag, I suppose, looming in on death for them. But it seems like uh, they'll still try to commit this basement side and maybe just play a little bit differently. Maybe play more proactive against uh, having this exact same roam clear being established by LSR because, well, it's worked out for them two rounds already. Why not try to make it a third and get a very dominating pr uh, position altogether? Having three round wins on your attack already is a massive boot for them. And trying to get four would make it pretty challenging for gaming gliders to claw back, not only in the first half, but throughout the rest of the second half as well. We have seen from round two and onwards on basement, Game of Gladiators able to make at least good positional use of these zombies, place them in good positions, like the one we just saw Jolton place inside a kitchen that allows him to play a little bit more aggressively on that doorway and hold a long angle inside of security. So there has been some good strategic thought from Game of Gladiators as to these positions. The utility also working well for them so far. One nade caught by an ADS and the other goes wide, and Jolton will retreat, and both him and Arrow will retreat as a result. So thankfully, they won't lose anything on this roam, unless somebody rotates over and gets barring, but if the focus is on security and kitchen, they get away alive. Still the same time frame though for LSR, but again, not scoring that first entry or even losing anybody definitely can be something that isn't too difficult for LSR to still have that exact same style of attack, being able to burn through all the utilities, still having a good amount of flashes in their back pocket, and still locating Barring as he was trying to go for a potential wide swing as someone was almost near that green double door, but he has to end up falling back, relocating down and towards the basin floor, and it's a full-fledged 5-on-5 five five in the final 60 seconds. LSR are on the tipping point right now. They're on the fulcrum where things might start turning against them. Similar in round number two, or similar in round number one, excuse me, they did have to swing in and take control of positions by gunfights. Right now, there's only 50 seconds left, and they only have one nade remaining on the board, so they might not be able to clear positions like somebody playing in Pillar or somebody playing in Long Haul. They might just have to take those by gunfights, and if the guns from Game and Gladiators start coming alive, LSR won't have a very easy entry. Game and Gladiators on that basement round were very close, but if they're able to win it here, that's where they could make the difference between round two and here. LSR's utility starts going in, but so does Game and Gladiators fly and return. A smoke grenade for a smoke grenade, but now LSR will start moving in with the EU1D. Flashbangs as well. They're able to take cover, but Jolton takes Giddy completely off guard. Quartz gets his first, and Game and Gladiators finally have an advantage as they move into the late round. Wimpy struggling to probe for a pick, but he does find one as Barring moves out along. He could get a second as well, unless Quartz is hitting his shots, and Quartz certainly is. Two seconds remaining as Inrio falls game and gladiators will get their first round not by a clutch but second round overall and i'm glad we didn't see an early fallback at all it was still that same time frame of the minute 40 minute 30 mark where gaming gliders eventually gave up that mid floor position but instead just properly falling back not losing anybody and not wasting too much utility on that top floor altogether and because it was that solid five on five and lstar ended up giving a bit too much away in that first half of the action phase they were able just to comfortably hold those positions like we saw over in barrel doorway having the impact trick as well on towards those uh, that double wall part and to make sure we could have the azami remain in that position for a long amount of time it slowed down lsr to such a great 
degree. Also having Rudy there as well, making sure no one could push in through elbow and get rid of his position in a timely manner. The stars just simply aligned and that team play finally revealed itself here by Gaming Gliders, giving themselves a solid win on their defense. Now they get to go to dorms as well, where it wasn't exactly showcasing, you know, great cohesion from them. LSR was still able to get the better of them, even though it came from getting a lot of those kills in the late round. LSR were able to recover from some early losses, but this was the site of maybe a bit, at least some momentum that Game and Gladiators can channel if there's any residual bit of it laying around the site. Jolton clutching that 1v3, and still overall a solid early round that sure Wimpy got the first pick, but Game and Gladiators were able to retreat, and LSR didn't have a very concrete opening until they were able to get a second kill very late in the round. We'll also see some changes by LSR getting moving to the Amaru, so they might also try to get some momentum of their own, albeit the op phase as opposed to the post plant. Potentially trying to get that early aggression, Giddy's going to utilize that Gara hook to just hop in through big tower and potentially try to uh, just gain some early map control and clear out that roam game at a pretty fast manner. LSR not opted to go for the exact same play we saw last time. It seems like they're focusing more on trying to get control of Master, getting that closet wall opened up, and maybe have somebody late push in through Attic as the Maverick of Wimpy begins to move around a bit closer to where Giddy is currently holding in these first 40 seconds. Still tons of drones being thrown out, gathering more information here for the offense, and it seems like their time, or their time management pardon, is uh, pretty good so far. Still gaining a good chunk of the map in their back pocket, and still taking their time. And with that control Giddy got early on, they have the cutoff drone, Giddy can just fly right on in, not even have to waste time moving on to their Pell, Wimpy can open the wall fairly quickly after as well. LSR not really focusing on that small tower side of things like they were before, instead focusing more on the traditional master bedroom and attic clear that we have seen teams go to uh, more in the previous few months as opposed to recently where things have definitely switched up a little bit. Nobody really downstairs either, there is somebody over in small tower but not the presence in security like we've seen last time in Ooh, Giddy getting very aggressive. He's moving up Attic. One to his hard right. Just spot him. That's a free kill right there. Taking down the smoke as well, but a nice shot by Arrow. Brings that one back. That's a set and aids gone, and same with LSR's opening. But you still have to worry about getting that position, still having three flashbangs. He could completely deny anyone either playing close near that hard wall or anyone stacked up in the back of kids. Quartz is still playing underneath, though. He could go for a potential nitro cell toss if the information is given. So as of right now, we're at a pretty good standstill with two different X factors being on the board for both LSR and Gaming Gladiators. Got that C4 as well, that if Arrow wants to toss on over, could land right at Inrio's feet. And as good as Inrio is, I'm not sure he could even react in time. But Giddy's starting to push on in, throw some flashbangs out both Arrow and Barring. Ready to see if anybody peeks in that angle, especially Barring, who's fervently waiting somebody to peek. But oh, the coverage taken down by a few well-placed shots. Giddy with three so far as he pushes into Attic, and he has full control of the site. Spots one going prone, but unfortunately, Jolton's a little bit too quick. That LSR, they definitely come away with the undisputed winner of their attacking half. And I'm glad we saw Giddy just not immediately try to charge in and get that trade once Wimpy had actually died. He went back, took more time to gather information, and actually waited for people like Inrio, who already had deer control, to help clear out the Goyo by throwing out grenades, throwing flashbangs at the exact same time. Eventually, it forced Arrow back, granting a very, a very required kill for LSR outright. That allowed Giddy just to walk right in through kids, find a triple kill before eventually falling, and you still had all that pressure building up on the main breach, on Trophy doorway as well. It was a full-fledged collapse by LSR, and once again, their team play really outshining Gaming Gladiators. Despite the fact we did see a couple of good rounds by them, it just wasn't enough to fully close things out in that first half. Maybe Gaming will have a little bit more luck as they switch sides, and now Barring still the only one who's not been able to get some kills, but Arrow and Quartz have, all, have both been able to have at least some good moments in that previous half. Also, as well, overall, LSR having a pretty solid time on the entry game, able to come away with it via the majority of rounds, John, especially Giddy able to get mm -hmm. three kills that Amaru moving in through Attic, and now here on the defense. I have a feeling that LSR, especially off the back of, well, one, Giddy and that utility, and two, Wimpy definitely having a much better weekend than he had previously. I think they might be getting aggressive, and I'm worried that Gaming Gladiators might not be able to stop it. 
And for the most part, we saw, at least against Luminosity, Gaming Gladiator's ability to consistently trade, not only in the early round, but also the late round when they eventually had to fall back away from that roam game and only stick to the site. That hasn't really been the same story. Yeah, we have seen a couple of 4v4 positions in that early game, but again, the late round plays by Gaming Gladiators have just simply been outclassed by LSR a majority of times. Not only by Wimpy, but we just saw a masterful round done by both Gideon and Rio in tandem. And if we, if we continue to see that slow style of play in the late round, especially now that Gaming Gladiators is on the attack, this could definitely be a very strong win altogether for LSR and just a quick one at that too. And here we'll quickly rotate out a big tower once window gets open he'll vault down on the railing and make the second hop down onto the floor not wanting to try to play his life when he doesn't need to especially if he can maybe even rotate back through big power giddy's opened up a hole in that wall or somebody's opened up a hole in that wall whether it's giddy or whoever somebody did now inria will take it reinforce it and move back towards the site not sure if anybody from gaming gladiators is watching that window in the attic i doubt they would not really too much too much of a reason to especially when there's so much to clear already on oregon they'll be instead turning their attention down towards security and whoever, whoever's playing inside there well, now just about ready to clear out this player inside of security. We could potentially see those nades being teased by Gaming Gladiators, acknowledging the player's position inside of security. Seems like Wimpy is by himself for the time being, almost playing for his life, not even having that hatch opened up, so he cannot fall back unless he wants to go in through Green Hallway. But again, we saw that attic presence for just a brief moment for Gaming, but it seems like they have just fully allocated over in near the side of Small Tower. Nope, they still have someone actually in Attic. I was correct on that call originally. Jolton now getting that back wall opened up. And Wimpy, I believe, still just holding down this power position, just hoping that someone overextends to maybe work that entry once again in the favor of LSR. And they don't have anybody playing inside of security, so Game and Gladiators, if they keep pressuring this position and even take down Wimpy, they will be in a good spot to start going for that white plan. Wimpy even getting aggressive, but oh, smokes barring as the Yana peaks the angle un ads Inrio joining Wimpy downstairs as well. They know they can cause some chaos in Game and Gladiators' attacking strategy if they hold on to this position. An aid goes through, but sadly for Quartz, it finds no purchase on a defender. It's the last one remaining for Game and Gladiators. They have to win this by gunfights, and with LSR in the 5v4 going in for a vault into Big Window or a sprint up white stairs is not looking like it's favoring them. Jolton might vault into green. Arrow knows that the Jaeger is there and they're able to take him down both very effectively. But Enrio is not exactly adding a lot in terms of utility or positioning. Wimpy is still the one you have to worry about. Giddy as well with that vertical angle looking down into green. This is all looking up LSR right now. Especially if Giddy with that final Kiva barrier is able to place it on that big window and completely stop anybody from jumping in if he times it correctly. Quartz creeping up white stairs does find Vivid. That's a very big pick to get a very powerful angle for Game and Gladiators. We're still waiting for Giddy. As soon as he thinks Jolton's going to vault him through the window, he sees it happen. Kiva barriers it, and that's what LSR were waiting for. And as soon as that moment strikes, as soon as that moment arrives, they take it and get their first defense. And for LSR, they only had to worry about a handful of positions because how much we saw Gaming Gladiators only focus on going in for a complete clear in that first floor and only until about that minute 20 mark we saw a proper opening of that attic wall to at least have more than one approach on that attack and because we had so much time wasted yet still weren't able to confirm the actual kill on towards wimpy it just caused way too many problems for gaming gliders in that end game again the team play it seemed there at the beginning but when they were actually trying to focus on not only worrying about that vertical pressure while also trying to rotate but even dealing with wimpy it just seemed like it was not meant to be all together for gaming gliders based on the fact we had lsr start out strong in that round and continue to hold those key choke points throughout the entire round they're able to take their first win on the defense and now have a three round advantage against gaming they get to go down to basement as well which as we've said before tends to be the site that teams prefer to play and one that lsr have not really deviated much from their strategy in the various iterations of this roster, and that could be something good for Gaiman. We know that Giddy is probably going to be playing in Laundry with Warden with the 1.5. I've seen Giddy play that position on that exact operator time and time again through various permutation of LSR's lineup. So Gaiman Gladiators will likely know if they've done their homework, which they have. They have the support staff to do it. They certainly have the pedigree to do it as well. They'll likely know that Giddy is able to play these positions, and if they can get into, say, Freezer or Laundry with any one of those six nades, could even find an easy pick as a result if Giddy is playing there and hasn't shifted things up. Interesting to actually see Giddy, though, running that warden, maybe to have those ADSs placed somewhere else. He can just face check the flash grenades if procking his smart glasses at the right time to uh, still be a 
a mighty force against gaming gliders when they eventually want to go and clear out blue bunker or if they want to at all just that uh again that reassurance that lsr definitely want to have starting out towards the end game position seems for right now though gaming gliders they want to try to replicate what lsr were doing trying to clear out small tower in that first minute maybe forcing wimpy back to break one of those many drones allocated for this roam clear and instead of trying to you know take that initiative he just falls back instead he's already done his job wasted a fair chunk of time and also weakened that drone economy as well so not a bad start at all for wimpy Hey, you don't really need to uh, go for uh, go for big air on that roam on top of freezer stairs. If you're not going to dedicate any utility to it, just get a drone, maybe two, and then back off. Especially if you're playing a zombie, you don't want to die early with those Kiva barriers, and then you'll just feel like a right fool if you end up taking out one of the, uh, or losing one of the most important and powerful pieces of utility the defense has at their disposal at the moment. Gaming Gladiators will take that bit of map control seated in kind, even starting to put some players down lower on the T1 landing at the moment. Obviously not trying to get aggressive, but also seeing if anybody goes for a flank. Inreal and Vivid both playing a little bit towards those stairs in these positions. Maybe Barring will find something for his troubles. A minute 20 mark is just about to strike and aiming they may have cleared out that top floor but they are still uh trying to prep or, or prepare themselves sorry to uh, eventually get this full bottom floor clear underway getting a couple of hatches opened up and just repositioning all together eventually having to try to get someone to work their way down in through blue bunker but you have vivid being able to watch over both those back stairs and blue bunker with that barrel position and being able to waste tons of time with those toxic smokes since there's only six seconds left and vivid still has all three of his gadgets in his back pocket Gaming Gladiators without any smoke canisters won't just be able to block off that angle either. They'll have to rely on those flashes, and of course, with Giddy being Warden, he's rotated over there, or he's been playing there for a good portion of the round. He can dodge either smokes or flashes, but sadly, Vivid on smoke cannot dodge nades. A well-placed one by Jolton takes down the smoke, playing on that bunker doorway, leaving Giddy fairly isolated in the spot right now, but still with some good utility. Behind a shield with some ADSs and C4 in hand, he'll try his best to stave off the remaining 25 seconds as gaming gladiators make their way in but he's also watching that back tower stairs with a hole made in the single panel who in just barely dodging a nade he's able to flick onto courts as a result maybe even get two but rudy drops at the exact right time can even pick up wimpy with that with a very easy pre-fire make that three for rudy as he catches giddy rotating back in melee's the bp as well but young alec knows someone might be close oh no he doesn't turns his back to arrow i overestimated the info young alec had at his disposal and sadly lsr might have underestimated gaiman with only 20 seconds left it was a great tag team by both Wimpy and Inro because they knew what Giddy still being in Blue Bunker. They didn't have to worry about anyone swinging them from Barrel Doorway. But the big issue that LSR still had was the fact they didn't really have anything to slow down a push happening from that E-Box drop. We saw the Habana immediately charge in, find several kills with the Type 89 and the Bearing 9 as well, able to bring back that man advantage and eventually allow Gaming Gliders to flush their way in through the site and force that 1VX position with young Alec just not in a spot to try and deny that plant and also try to have Gaming Gladiators continue to push him uh, further and further away he was just essentially trapped in a rock in a hard space over near freezer once we had everyone fall away maybe for lsr they'll try to implement more utility over to the side of barrel dory because if jolton or pardon uh, if we had the smoke sorry that died to jolton party if we had vivid alive for a much longer period of time we could have potentially seen a better stall by lsr and maybe an even more challenging position outright for gaming gladiators in that final mark as always, the risk with uh, putting that smoke in such an aggressive position, especially one that will receive some focus for the attack, even if the late round, if the if the attack is going for the push that Gammon Gladiators ended up doing, they're probably going to throw some flashes and probably going to throw some nades over towards that doorway. And with the smoke playing there, if you know there are no ADSs that can catch it, or if they just time it properly, you will lose an important piece of utility because you decided to have it play there. So. It's a good point. Something we should see if LSR improve upon or change going forward. Still have Wimpy playing upstairs, but young Alec also inside of Kitchen. Both the Azami and the Jaeger might be playing this a little more aggressively. Nope, never mind. Young Alec isn't, but Wimpy might. Seems like they want to try to waste more time in the early round to potentially weaken that overall site execute seen by gaming ladders, whether that be just because they're shorter on seconds or they just have less players to work with altogether, less positions to try to contest against LSR. Either way, it's a decent adjustment that hopefully can work out for LSRs to potentially grant themselves match and series point. Seems like Arrow is aware that Enrio is already at the top of Big Tower and will try to just force him out maybe allow in to get a little more aggressive trying to take that one for one seems like the first turn is going to end up missing but the shots across the map with the n4 in the hand of jolton are definitely going to meet their mark as young alec is the first to fall in round nine 
And Balak rotated up freezer stairs, playing a very common position, but Joel moving up the hallway as well, able to catch him completely off guard. And also get some vertical play as well. Spots Wimpy moving around inside a kitchen with a nade he threw on the floor. Wimpy's gonna feel a lot more confused and concerned about this spot. Not exactly the clear we tend to see on Oregon, but Barring able to get his first kill as a result, and Giddy feeling a little bit, a little bit of pressure to try to get aggressive, moving up these freezer stairs. Inrio as well catches Barring completely off guard, an unfortunate end to the round that gave Barring his first kill of the round. But LSR have something they needed with Giddy as well. They have probably made things even better for the defense than Game and Gladiators thought they had it. But because LSR, or at least Gaming, sorry, had spent so many resources trying to clear out that aggressive roam play by LSR, they are very low on not only just a couple of grenades here and there, but also the drones. There's only two left, and that lack of proper information could be a huge upset for Gaming if they just don't check a rat angle, and LSR sitting there just waiting for them since eventually Gaming Gladiators, they have to push into this basement floor as once again they are running low on time in a few short moments. Losing that Hibana as well for any of the hatches that aren't electrified, which are two right now at the moment, as Giddy has one Electro Claw in his pocket. You have to solely rely on the Maverick to open up these remaining hatches, unless Giddy, of course, reacts in time and just electrifies. But there's no point right now with the Maverick, who is, well, one of the most time-consuming hard breachers in the game at the moment. You also can't clear out Vivid's position as easily. You can't use those X-Kairos to get an angle on the doorway to then nade on through. You gotta do it through other ways, either through Bunker or from some other area. 30 seconds remaining, and as you said, also earlier, John, only two drones. Make that one drone left. Any intel you have is probably what you'll have to work with. As you move down to 20 seconds left, Vivid rotating into Harry Potter. This is the exact position that can catch anybody from the attack off guard. Game and Gladiators start flooding in through Bunker. I'm still watching Vivid, but especially Giddy as well as he rips that C4, waiting to go in for a pick. And Rio, he distracts the attention of the attack, allows Vivid to get the trade. Arrow, the only one alive. LSR moved to match point. As, as a whole, this team seems a lot more lethal than they have been in the past three play days. And it was that lack of information that allowed Inrio and the smoke of Vivid to play perfectly together, stopping any kind of presence near back stairs or anyone trying to charge their way in through barrel doorway as well. Even having a C4 prepped as well by the lone Kai to make sure no one could just drop down in through E box, which was one of the saving graces that we saw last time Laundry was in play for the side of Gaming Gliders, where they were able to find a triple kill in that Habana selection and still force away young Alec and make sure he could not win that 1vx. Kids in dorms now in the drawing board for LSR as they are still having a pretty good position outright in this best of one matchup where we've only had a few glimpses of hope and just proper coordination altogether for gaming gladiators it seems. Yep, still Jolton and Rudy putting up some of the best numbers for gaming gladiators overall. Things have improved you know a little bit on the attack especially with barring getting that first pick but overall it has just been a lot more consistent of an effort by LSR with only Vivid not putting up comparable numbers to the rest of his team but uh, it's Vivid playing a hard support on attack and anchoring on defense. I think we can give him a little bit of a pass on this one. The final site, potentially, if uh, Game and Gladiators can't mount a three-round comeback. We'll have forms, as you said, coming through for LSR, but still a very similar lineup overall. LSR really not deviating very much on these defenses and what has worked so far. And I imagine John will likely see Wimpy play at the forefront of the defensive frontier, just like he has previously. And he could still be a nuisance if once again just not dealt with properly, despite having multiple people with flash grenades, with drones feeding tons of information, having those grenades as well. They still weren't able to clear out Wimpy, who was basically playing inside of Kitchen and Security just to die. He didn't, he, again, he did not have the hatch opened up. He had no potential to fall back as he was being slowly pushed in from multiple sides. But now Wimpy doubling down in on this kitchen position, also having backup from Inrio as well. It's definitely going to allow a lot more stress to build up here for gaming players, especially if they don't deal with this challenge early. Wimpy and Inrio won't feel much pressure early on, but Rudy has moved to that bottom white window, so he's ready to see if anybody rotates across there, and he can get an easy cutoff, maybe an easy, easy first pick, but oh, barring spots the back of somebody as well. Just a couple seconds too late as they already started moving in through green. He can't catch Inrio in time, but can start focusing on Wimpy as he's still remaining inside of this kitchen security area. Some air jabs placed as well to make sure that they can't get aggressive moving into dining if they do want to go for a very brazen swing outward, but none of this has even dissuaded Wimpy whatsoever. He will remain inside of security as long as he can, just as he did on that dorm's defense previously, trying to remain there as long as possible. But we've been focusing on this so much, John. That might not even be where the first kill comes through. 
Might just be gaming gliders trying to hop their way in through Master Young. Out thankfully has some Syria Gates along with his deployable shield as well. It just spots out the pixel of the head of the nomad. Could potentially land the shot. He's thinking about it. He's waiting for the perfect moment here, yes! and he gets it. A great one tap by young Alec. Just being able to sit comfortably behind that shield as no one's playing top armory to help flush up this Aruni, granting them that first kill. But at least there's a trade as we have Wimpy eventually fall on that first floor. Very nice shot by young Alec, but very impactful kill by Game and Gladiators as well. Able to take down Wimpy and remove that security pressure. And even though they lost Arrow, they're only hard breacher because they got that spot, because they cleared out security. Now they can start moving in up white stairs and into big window. The type of execute where hard breaching isn't as necessary as, say, Master Bedroom and Attic with a nade from below as well. Quartz is able to make things a lot better and very much compensate for the early loss of Arrow as well. Inrio is still on the roam and could catch Game and Gladiators off guard, but the attack has done quite a bit of work to mitigate the damage done by losing Arrow. Inrio will try to go for a potential run out or find a potential angle, but nothing is giving his way so far. It does, though. Take down Barring, stall out the attack for just a couple seconds more. Might even get a second pick if he continues aggressing on to White Stairs. But as the Razor Bloom activates, that indicates Rudy's vaulted on in. But he's dodged it despite the low HP. But <gasps> Vivid somehow retakes. Where's the coverage, Joel? Where's the coverage, Quartz? It's all faltering at the exact round, at the exact moment you need it. Joel now trapped in a 1v3 with only five seconds left. Gets one pick that Vivid spoon feeds him. But it's LSR winning 7-3 as they come out with the strongest game that they've had since the start of stage two. A brilliant way to lock out this best of one series for LSR taking the match against Gaming Gladiators and the improper timing of just backing away and allowing LSR to retake the dorm site essentially to stop that plant from going down. We saw a lack of any ability despite having someone on white stairs and someone on the double window from slowing down Vivid to just run at the Nomad who was already low in HP to stop that plant and that was the only thing that remained on the side of Gaming Gladiators to make sure they didn't end up losing out this matchup and to potentially grant themselves overtime because again despite we had wimpy eventually fall there was still a general lack of proper map control we saw pretty much no verticality except for that one grenade that was tossed out by quartz but then they ran out of nades they had to attack the site directly when they were low on resources and still in a three on three when your anchors can just sit comfortably in sight eventually they're going to try to go for a retake and in that instance they just picked the perfect moment to go for that retake and it worked granting them their seventh win yeah, it was still a winnable round, but somehow there were some yeah. laps in coverage from Jolton watching the very area that Vivid sprinted through. Smoke runs on in, downs the planter, and that's the ball game at that's that it. point. But overall, a very good showing from LSR. Unfortunately, as Jim said before we got into the game, both these teams ha seem to be coming out of yesterday's play day on the rise, that they might be redeeming themselves from some rough matches to start out. But one of them had to take a bow. One of them had to sit back. And unfortunately for Gammon Gladiators today, they drew the short straw. But LSR still get a 7-3 victory. And we have a desk to break down just exactly how they did it. There's one way to describe this, and that would be a statement match, Connor. LSR coming out and really controlling this game from start to finish. Oh yes, especially on their attacks. It was really kind of awkward as we were watching. We're like, oh no, there's a there's a one ban on the attacker side the Gaming Gladiators did that was the Ying. And the Ying is exactly what changed the entirety of LSR's attacks into actually being pretty dang good. And then the first two rounds, we see they're executing on basement with 10 seconds left. But for some reason, CJ, we were talking about it. It was just working today. It was just exciting. It was just great. It was clutch as hell on the side of LSR. And, and Gaiman just wasn't clutch like that, though. I'm, I'm just be honest. Oh, you see this clip right here. Rudy ran through. Rudy had some serious, like, energy there. Um, I can't say the full phrase, but you know what I mean. He's just running through there. But with the exception of just like a couple isolated incidents like that, really just was not, it just was not like those those, those dying moments for uh, gaming just never went their way, quite frankly, mm -hmm. almost this entire game. There's not a stat for that. There's some nice stats here. Barring, went, there is a stat for Barring. Barring went 2 of 10. I, I, I'm going to be honest. I forgot Barring was on the team. I feel like he took too much pre-workout or something. And that's been affecting him. But yeah, I mean, you combine that with Quartz also disappearing. It's like, you know, just Quartz and Barring had very little impact. And then when they did have a chance at winning rounds, they weren't clutch. That's the TLDR of this matchup.
we're we're gonna get a bit more chance to talk about it so so maybe just briefly connor but you know game and gladiators they have another match coming up but i would argue that it's against rent free this was maybe supposed to be the easier of the two i mean the way lsr played maybe this does turn out to be the more difficult of the two matches but they do have a shot at redemption but man after the way they played here and individual efforts if they don't pick this up it's not looking good for them yeah it definitely isn't and for me the most worrying part about gaiman's gladiators game was the fact that they went two and eight on entry mm -hmm. and you know none of those entry kills came from barring or courts and like you were saying this is the easier matchup technically according to the you know the standings yeah you know, LSR is a little bit easier than Rent Free. And Rent Free, you know, that's a team that is <clears throat> less like 15 or 16 on entry as a team with the number one entry in the league. Mm -hmm. So early round is going to be very important going ahead of this game. And for the side of LSR, we talked and touched briefly about how, hey, there was a little bit of role changes on the side of LSR with Wimpy taking a more aggressive role. All of a sudden, he is back on flank watch. So I think that was just a clubhouse moment where, hey, He's a little bit more flexible. Mm. You don't necessarily need a flank watch on Clubhouse. So, you know, you can you can get away with putting him on LMG. But hey, overall, with Enrio still playing just as well, everybody on LSR was doing their job and taking advantage of the gaps and weaknesses of gaming gladiators. Well, Enrio always seems to show up where he'll also show up is on the screen as he did yesterday here. We'll ask him a few questions about today's matchup. In Rio, we were just saying it statement match from you guys. It, it looked to us on the outside that there were very little mistakes made on the on the side of your team. How did it feel? Uh, it felt good. Like a um, like as you guys put at a, at a point in the thing, like what Giddy what Giddy said. That was Giddy that said that, and I don't care. Um, we're <laughs> dialed in, baby. We're here. To, we're here to come back and try to finish first for the season. Yeah, and and you seem to you gained momentum throughout this matchup. What I really liked from your team is gaining that momentum. And even if gaming gladiators had you know a good couple of kills or even a good round, it didn't seem to phase you guys. No, not at all. If they they got the first on our what second baseman defense, they got the first two picks. It was like all good. We were like play for picks back. Me, that's why I ran inside meeting and Giddy was playing for picks. I think well, I think he got on freezes chairs if I'm right. If not, we just played for picks backs. Got the main advantage to even and just played our played back down the site and bunkered. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you know, two wins in a row so far this weekend. Uh, the only thing left for you right now is do you have any statements to make to the fans, to anyone watching? Um, Sorry for the first week. We were we were just not in our right mindset of playing the game, but we're here to, we're here to come back, get first place, and grind, baby. We're dialed in. Like, we're here to take this. And okay, we appreciate well, all the support for sure. My, my bad for cutting you off. We're expecting it from you now in Rio. There's no, there's no going back now. <laughs> okay. Have a good one, dude. You too, man. Yeah, uh, cookies. Sounds like they're dialed in, right? Am I reading that right? Yeah, they're <laughs> dialed in for real, for real. You know, I just gotta say, Enrio's head, his hair is so like huge, bro. I wish I could do that. My 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 stuff be receding, but Enrio got that <laughs> big hair, bro. I just gotta say, totally unrelated. We're we're getting old, cookies. That's the only uh, you know. It hurts. Yeah, it hurts. It hurts. It hurts it, I'm still I'm kind of young. I'm kind of young. The only thing that hurts more than the soul are the joints right now. You know, getting old. So, but mm -hmm. we're a couple not of my joints hurt yet. too. It's okay. <laughs> we'll we'll get to you eventually, Connor. Don't worry. <laughs> Do you, you got wait? You got some joints that are hurting you? Yeah, just a couple. It's, it's mainly the lower half. You know, <laughs> yeah. elbows are fine though. Upper yeah, body's good. Elbows are fine. Well, that's the only yeah, part that's body. on camera, right? So, so we're all good there. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Game and Gladiators. Oh boy, Game and Gladiators not done for the day yet. We're gonna go to a quick break, and they got another tough one coming up against.